from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Dan Donovan. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from the Kanam Puza family from Mississauga, Ontario. This Mass is offered in thanksgiving for the blessings that the family has received. Our thanks to the Kanampusa family for making it possible for tens of thousands of faithful across Canada and around the world to share in this celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray so that they may return to the right path, give all who, for the faith they possess, are accounted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. King Solomon assembled before him in Jerusalem the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the ancestral houses of the Israelites, to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. All the people of Israel assembled with King Solomon at the festival in the month of Ethanim, which is the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the priests carried the ark. So they brought up the ark of the Lord, the tent of meeting, and all the holy vessels that were in the tent. The priests and the Levites brought them up. King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who had assembled before him were with him before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and oxen that they could not be counted or numbered. Then the priests brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread out their wings over the place of the Ark, so that the cherubim made a covering above the Ark and its poles. There was nothing in the Ark except the two tablets of stone that Moses had placed there at Horeb where the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites when they came out of the land of Egypt. And when the priests came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in thick darkness, I have built you an exalted house, a place for you to dwell in forever. The word of the Lord. Lord, go up to the place of your rest. O Lord, remember in David's favor how he vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not give sleep to my eyes until I find a place for the Lord. Lord, 
the good news of the kingdom and healed all who were sick. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and the disciples crossed over the lake and came to the land of Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard Jesus was. And wherever he went into the villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's reading from the first book of Kings is part of a much longer passage describing the rituals and prayers involved in the dedication of the newly built temple in Jerusalem. Central to the ceremony is a solemn bringing up of the Ark of the Covenant from the tent of meeting where it had traditionally been kept. The only things in the Ark, we are told, are the two tablets of stone which Moses placed in it at Mount Sinai. They recall and bear witness to the covenant that was then sealed between God and Israel. The procession to the temple and the installing in it of the ark, as well as of other furnishings for the sacrificial rituals to be celebrated there, mark a new moment in the religious life of the people of Israel. The crowd following the ark, which is being carried by priests, includes King Solomon, his courtiers, and the representatives of all the tribes of Israel. The size and nature of the event underline the unique place the temple has in the mind of the people. Its building represents the fulfillment of the longing of many over a long period of time for a central place of worship to which the Israelites could regularly go up in order to take part in the celebrations 
marking the great feasts of the liturgical year. A few hundred years later, Israel is defeated by the Babylonians. Jerusalem and the temple are destroyed and substantial numbers of the elites in the city are driven into exile. The loss of the temple is a devastating blow for the people and the priests and for the religious identity of the nation. It was widely seen at the time, not only as the place at which sacrifice and other rituals were to be performed, but also as the place where in a special way God was thought to dwell. Many referred to the temple as the house of God. There developed over subsequent centuries what has come to be called temple devotion or temple piety. People looked forward to and longed for the opportunity to join a pilgrimage to Jerusalem in order to participate in the rich ritual life celebrated in the temple and in doing so to come into the presence of God. A number of Psalms express a profound love and longing for the temple. Psalm 84, for example, begins, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, indeed it faints in the courts of the Lord. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. A day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. As Christianity grew and the church has developed in its own, the church developed its own distinctive forms of ritual and worship. It was in many ways influenced by the traditions of Israel, from the temple and its liturgy, to synagogue worship, and to family rituals and prayers. Almost everywhere where Christianity has put down its roots, there are churches in which believers gather to worship, to celebrate the sacraments, and to pray as individuals and as a community of faith. Some churches are impressive in their size and in the wealth of the art and furnishings they've amassed over the centuries. Others are smaller and more modest. I recall during my student days in Europe being all but overwhelmed by the way in which some of the great cathedrals imposed themselves on the surrounding city as well as on visitors. Other churches functioned as goals for pilgrimages of one kind or another. They were often more modest and celebrated a saint who had perhaps been active or martyred in that region. Such churches develop their own special atmosphere and spirituality. Some say that we don't really need buildings set apart simply for religious services. All that is needed, they argue, is a room in which the church, the community of faith, can gather to celebrate its Sunday liturgy as well as the sacraments. This is not all, however, that can be said about churches and what they can and should be for us. The Eucharist is at the heart of the religious life of many Christians, especially of Catholics. In the Mass, we believe that the risen Christ comes among us in the form of bread and wine. He does so in order to give himself to us as the bread of life and to draw us into his self-giving unto death for our salvation. That we experience God's graciousness to us in material things like bread and wine, oil and water, is an enormous help for us. We are embodied beings. We interact with the world through our senses. The material and visible nature of our rituals dispose us to, open, to, to be open to the unique nature of the rituals in which we are engaged. This is true of the buildings in which we gather and in which our rituals take place. I've been in churches in which there is very little religious feeling about them. 
They provide a space for the community to gather, but little else. Other churches offer a great deal more, including to one degree or another, a contemplative atmosphere, something that disposes us for prayer and reflection, things we all need more than ever in a world that is as full of noise and diversions as ours is. Churches like those evoke for us a sense of mystery into which they invite us to enter. I've known a number of such churches. I think at the moment of one that I've been celebrating the daily mass for over 20 years, a church which I find helpful in making my praying of the liturgy of the, of the word, liturgy of the hours more a religious event than when I pray in my own office. At the heart of Catholic churches is the tabernacle. The word for it in German is Gotteshaus, the house of God. The same image used in the biblical tradition for the temple. The sense of presence which permeates so many churches finds in the tabernacle and in the consecrated hosts it contains a focal point for our sense of being in the presence of what might be called the holy mystery, the presence of God and of the risen Christ. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit, that they may find relief and healing through Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the synod on synodality convoked by Pope Francis will be successful in strengthening and deepening the life of the church and of individual believers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For families, especially for those struggling with difficulties which have arisen because of the COVID-19 pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the elderly and the chronically ill and for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. By the mingling of this water and wine become partakers of his divinity who became partaker of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Gracious God, we ask you, wash me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of the name for our good and the good of the Holy Church. Look upon this offering of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed and praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of 
of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, power and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are the close called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. invite you to pray with us as part of the daily TV Mass community. Our daily devotional email connects you with a link to the day's Mass and a spiritual reflection. To join, please visit our website or call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for more information.